in the dream swami said get up write a letter to your mother say you are happy here i woke up and said how can i say i am happy swami i am not happy the swami called us for an interview after interview swami asked us to sit outside in a line and for teachers he gave us sari when he was giving sari he held it like this in in the hand and he gently hit me on my head and said happy Swami did like this to my mother and in my mother tongue Tamil he said she is my daughter Swami accepted me as his daughter on that day Sometimes he is a mother sometimes he is a guiding father sometimes he is a grinding teacher sometimes he is a very reverential guru with love and reverence and gratitude i bow down to that cosmic intelligence to that supreme power to that great being which resides in all of us and animates all of us our dear bhagwan and seek his blessings and permission to commence this session loving sai ram to all who have gathered here elders youngsters little ones their mothers actually it was an unplanned program for me though it the speech was planned i never thought that i'll get an opportunity to be here on the holy ishwarama day in dharmakshetra and i thank the organizers with heartfelt gratitude for giving me this opportunity uh, actually Uh, when we think of bhagwan or when we try to uh, f- uh, fix our relationship with bhagwan it grows beyond mother father or friend or anything for that matter you know i have not seen mother ishwara ma in the physical frame but we are all of us we are eternally indebted to mother ishwara ma for gifting us all with such wonderful son who is more than a mother to all of us i am sure you'll all agree with me he is in fact he is mother of he's a cosmic mother he's a divine mother he's mother of mother ishwara him herself in a way you know when we try to fix our relationship with bhagwan uh, sometimes he's a mother loving mother sometimes he is a guiding father sometimes he is a grinding teacher sometimes he is a compassionate sister sometimes he is a very protective brother sometimes he is a very reverential guru and always he is a personal god to all of us and i'll be sharing with you now a few of my experiences where i have experienced bhagwan in a few of these roles as mother you know when i had to join anandpur in 1991 it was december 9 1991 i had to join anandpur on december 7th 1991 me and my physical mother who is seated over here we both were uh, sitting on the darshan line those days you know the ashan line was uh, on a silvery sheet of uh, sand and beautiful arches uh, the kulvan hall was not there we were sitting i was in bliss but my mother was sad she didn't want me to join anantapur she didn't want me to uh, leave home and join an ashram or she never thought but now she is very happy that i have chosen other life and uh, at that point of time she was unhappy i didn't know that at that time you know swami started gliding and walking and he was coming towards me and i was uh, see that time i didn't know much about swami also it was all accidental just i saw swami for the first time in 1985 in kodai without knowing anything about swami that time even sai shruti was not there 
Swami was in Mrs. Uh, Srinivasan's house. I'll tell about my episode of that coming shortly. Uh, when we were sitting in Darshan line, Swami came and created Vibhuti and gave it to me and in his characterical, characteristical, characteristical posture like this he did. And what was in his hand, you know, Swami did like this to my mother and in my mother tongue Tamil he said, she is my daughter. She, uh, Swami accepted me as his daughter on that day. And it was like a promise. <laughs> it was a promise he gave to my mother. Later, after Darshan, my mother confided in me. In the heart, she was crying and she said, Swami, I am leaving my daughter in your hands. From now on, you are everything for her. You should take care of her till the end. If you accept for that, she had put so many conditions. We always have that habit now, we always tell Swami, do this, do this, do this. And he will invariably do all that. But we won't do what, we, what he wants us to do. Sometimes we fail. So he, she had put all those conditions. You should take care. If that be the case, this bhajan should be the next bhajan. And that bhajan was the next, some Vaishnavi Devi or something she, and that bhajan was the next bhajan. Swami was coming. And you should give me promise, which was just not possible, but Swami gave her. Swami just did like this, and like small children, you know, she pinched her hand, and she said in Tamil, Swami said in Tamil, Ava en Punna, she is my daughter. And Swami just moved off. It didn't make much sense to me at that point. But later, many, many, many occasions, many an occasion, I've experienced the divine mother's love and protection, which I had uh, uh, so many I there. So, you know, uh, okay, I joined Anandpur, 91, December. That point, so, you know, previously I had worked for nine years in a uh, university where my students were hundreds, 100, 120, that was the strength. So, I had to, I was so young. I finished my PG early and, uh, you know, in 20, when I was 20, I started teaching. Uh, I had to shout because such a huge group. And I came to Anandpur. They introduced me to my set of students. I entered the class. There were hardly four children sitting. I was so shocked. Four children in the class. What happened? But the strength shows 40. Where are the other children? Ma'am, they are all exempted. Exempted for what? Sports practice. I never thought, December, I joined in December, January 11th is our very important day, all of us know now, but that time I didn't know anything about sports. I thought, what, we are an academic institution and you are giving so much importance to sports? I thought, they looked at me like anything, what, you don't know anything about Swami? For us, academics is second. Our only aim is to please Swami on sports meet day. You should see the, later I understood what is sports meet and why it is important. But I was so depressed, my first experience. Four children in the class. Next day I'm going, only two were sitting. And what am I to teach? They have not started the syllabus. And coming back from January, they have to take their first uh, session, or first uh, test, internal test. I was worried. I asked the head of the department, Madam, shall I take special class? She looked at me like this. What? Children are all playing in the, practicing in the ground and you want to take special class? Till the end, till I came out of the Anandpur campus in 2020, children always know me as a special class teacher. Because somehow I will drive them so that I will see to it that even the lowest grade child will get a B grade at least. But somehow, you know, that I was not very happy when I saw that. And uh, uh, to top it all, by December 25th, we came for Christmas when we went back, the whole classes were suspended. Even those two girls were not there. No class only. I was, what am I to do? All teachers had something to do and I was new. I don't know anything, so they didn't allot anything. So I was, I felt so lonely. And uh, Jan 5th, we all packed up and came to Parthi for ground practice. And there also I was odd man out. And all the teachers who were in the room, they went to the ground. They said, you go for darshan. We'll have darshan in the ground. Because Swami invariably will go every day to see the practice. 
I just went to the ground. I had an uneven full darshan that day. I just looked at Swami like that and came back. And there was nobody in the room. And uh, because I was very low emotionally, I took up a book and started reading. But because my mood was not set, that book dropped and I slept off. And when I woke up, before waking up, you know, I had a dream. In the dream, Swami, is up, Swami appeared. And Swami said, get up, write a letter to your mother. Say you are happy here, she's crying. I woke up and said, how can I say I'm happy, Swami? I'm not happy. Then I just watched it. I saw the time, 11.30, I went for food, came back and resumed my reading the book. But my mind was not in the book because first of all, I was not happy professionally. Second one, here the all teachers went away. I felt so lonely. Then I said, okay. Then I reading, reading again, I slept off. But you know, Swami never gives up. That is one unique feature of Swami. Once he has taken up, he'll never give up. He reappeared, same dream repeated. He said, get up, write letter to your mother. She's crying. Say you are happy. Now I got little alert. I took an inland letter. I wrote about all my experiences in Anandpur, having no students in the classroom and coming here feeling lonely and about the dream and said, Amma Swami is telling that I should write a letter to you that I am happy, but I am not happy. <laughs> I finished off, posted the letter. I posted the letter, I, I was waiting and all teachers, students, everybody came back after practice and after freshening, freshening they were getting ready for evening darshan and they were discussing very uh, vigorously what sari they will wear for Shankaranti, price distribution. Will they wear this Swami sari or that Swami sari or this new sari? Then you know I was quite young, I was only 25 that time, I was quite young and I thought oh my god. I don't have a new sari, I don't have a Swami sari. Now I know that sari and all is not immaterial for Swami or how our appearance, our inner thing is more important. But I felt again unhappy. My God, these teachers didn't say also anything to me while packing. At least I would have packed a new sari, a good sari. Then all the more I was depressed. I went to the uh, darshan hall, came back, then sports meet went on. And sports meet, looking at that uh, grand event, little I became, oh my God, what effort children are putting and how happy Swami is. Slowly that transformation came. Yes, it is something. Education. What is education? Education is not a matter of giving information. Education is a matter of purifying the heart. And purification process is not easy. This is what I understood slowly. It was not a uh, z-boomba like that, no. Slowly that uh, thing dawned on me. But anyhow, I was still unhappy about uh, not having a, a presentable sari according to the standards on the price distribution day. 11th came and went. 12th, Swami called us for an interview. On 12th, after interview, Swami asked us to sit outside in a line. And for teachers, he gave a sari. That was, the, that was the only sports meet time in my 29 years of working when Swami gave sari on the sports meet day. And you know, he gave, a, and I like cotton saris. Swami gave a beautiful cotton sari. And that was the time, only time when Swami gave cotton saris for us. Otherwise, it will be synthetic or silk. This is also Swami's sari. Uh, it will be, <laughs> you know. It will, it is like, you know, we'll, it is not that sari. Now I have understood it is not that sari that is important. But the most important thing is, when he was giving sari, he held it like this in, in the hand. And he gently hit me on my head and said, happy? He asked. <laughs> you know, slowly, he understood, he balances our emotions. At the same time, he also goes beyond emotions. That's what I understood. He demonstrates or he just gently drops his omniscience. He teaches such lessons like a mother. You see, when we are, when we are very sad, the first person or the first uh, uh, way, the, the relationship which will balance that emotion is mother. We run only to her lap to say and to pour our 
uh, whether joy or unhappiness, what a bit. The first person all of us whom we relate to is the mother. And Swami gave me that opportunity. When I felt bad or felt low, it was he who came at that point of time. But now looking back, I am analyzing all these things. But that time, you know, it was only, oh, Swami gave me sari. Now you see, now all teachers have to wear that sari only on the price distribution day. No this or that, no difference, uniform like that. And more than that, Swami made it very clear. You said you are not happy. Are you happy? Happy, he said and he hit. Then uh, this is something which I uh, understood about the motherly love, how he balances our emotions. And he goes beyond that also. And he reveals his omniscience. And why he does that, I'll slowly come to that. Another event where I experienced his motherly love so much. So many are there, but for time's sake, you know, I will cut short all that. And one or two I'll tell for each of my relationship with Bhagavan. You know, it was one Sunday, uh, we, we are coming back, and I saw one very bad accident very bad accident in front of my eyes. Even today, you know, why I am relating is that has gone so deep into my psyche. I saw the death in front of my eyes. And I was so disturbed, so disturbed. But, you know, many saw. But uh, I can't. Everybody is now feeling sad. So we came back, we finished everything, our night dinner over, and next day we have to get ready for the class. I prepared for the class. When we switched off the light, my roommate, she had a good sleep, but I didn't close my eyes. I couldn't close. If I close my eyes, that scene was coming. It has affected me so deeply. So that day went off, but I didn't tell anyone. So next day I got up, went for class, finished my class, lectures, everything over. Evening came because of lack of sleep. I was little drained of energy. Then second day, no sleep. I couldn't sleep. Third day, I had no energy to walk also to the class, but somehow I pulled finish and I told my roommate, I am feeling very sick in stomach. I want to go home. I want to go see my mother. I want to go and see Swami. And that time Swami was in Brindavan. So I applied for leave and came to Brindavan. And you know, I pulled myself for darshan. I, because it was not as a group we came, I got only in the fourth or third block or somewhere, but in the corner. I just sat there so limp and Swami came for darshan, he looked at me, nothing he asked, he created vibhuti and not so much, one handful he gave and it was there in my hand and he said, Chesko, take namaskar and then he asked, when are you going? I didn't have energy to talk or say anything and even to take namaskar, sitting only I did like this. I didn't have even energy to bend. I had vibhuti in my hand. I looked at Swami, I didn't answer him. I just blank look I gave. Then Swami moved off. I came home, put the water in, uh, vibhuti in the water, mixed and drank half and remaining half I kept. Because I know some of other teachers who saw that with me, they were also a little disturbed, though they were a little stronger. So I wanted to take that back to Anantapur. So half vibhuti I kept for them, half I mixed in water and drank off. Within 10 minutes after drinking that uh, vibhuti water, as if I was administered anesthesia, uh, my eyes drooped. And I came back after morning darshan, around 10.30, I fell asleep. But I told my mother why I have come, what is the reason I didn't sleep for three days because I was so disturbed after the sight. I slept so they didn't disturb me. They thought I'll get up in another two, three hours. Because my general psyche is four or five hours maximum good sleep is enough for me to have full energy. That is even today that is my system. Five hours, four hours sleep is enough for me. I started sleeping 10.30, afternoon, evening, night. Next day morning, six o'clock only I got up. And when I got up, I was fresh. And you know, that anesthesia which Swami gave, that balancing of the emotions, Nobody can do. If I had gone to the doctor, they would have given me my sleeping pills or some counseling they go and they would have really made me, a, they would have put me on antidepressant or something and the treatment will go on for two, three months maybe. So I was, I just question, I said, Amma, I'll cancel, I'll go back to Anandpur, I'll cancel my leave, I feel better now. But I'll go for darshan. So second day morning darshan, I rushed and I sat. 
saw me just walk past me she didn't even look at me you know what i have understood now is see he not only balanced the emotions but he proved to me that is beyond emotions so slowly you know his omniscience and his beyond emotions like this so many experiences i can tell which i had with swami where he played the role of a wonderful mother to me now coming to the role of a father i have also experienced swami's fatherly guidance that was entirely throughout my research journey see first time when i saw swami in mrs uh, shrinivas house in kodai there were only few people at that time and i had to i had to i don't know anything about swami i just started hearing about him and uh, i had my mphil synopsis to be submitted that was there with me i gave it to swami swami opened the synopsis read the title looked up at me and said do phd and come and join i didn't understand where to come and join do phd okay but come and join where and i was not uh, very serious about it i came back and 85 to 91 6 years you know completely swami was i was disconnected only i read something and uh, read something about swami and i was not very uh, keen but i'll cut short the story things fell in place and 91 i joined anantpur when i joined anantpur in 91 december january i told you swami gave us interview on january 12th after sports meeting that time uh, professor ziba bashrudin english department head she introduced me to swami she said swami kotta teacher kotta teacher swami new teacher new teacher swami did like this again she said swami kotta teacher swami swami looked at her and looked at me and said kotta teacher kaadu nenu 6 years munduke appoint chesanu <laughs> that time i don't know anything of uh, telugu so i memorized what swami said so when i came out i asked uh, sai lakshmi ka who, who is a telugu guide what did swami say swami said you are not a new teacher he appointed you 6 years back then i didn't understand aka i joined only in december how swami is telling he appointed me 6 years back then you just think very uh, you think for yourself somewhere you will get so after 2 3 months it dawned on me 1985 i saw swami when he said do phd and come and join but i joined in 91 6 years and you know how he is demonstrating his omniscience you know you know he knows everything but all this now when i look back how slowly swami took me from step to step to make me accept him that was the lesson which i learned and in the end okay in my phd journey i didn't do phd when i joined i joined without phd only so as i said swami will never give up after some two three inter group interviews one interview you know swami looked at me and asked who is your guide i didn't understand why he is asking guide guide means what guide it didn't even strike me that phd guide swami is asking then who is your guide again he asked i looked at swami who is your phd guide he said swami i have not registered for phd then swami just left it as if it is not his uh, botheration like that we came back the then uh, vice chancellor was uh, professor venkatraman he gave a call to the then principal of anantapur who was uh, mrs uh, hemalata she is no more now and she called me swami is calling you like she, we were also scared of professor hemalata you know she is very strict uh, uh, principal swami is calling you for what swami is calling me how swami will call me over the phone i am not such an important person that swami should call me over the phone and as if when i go and he will call me immediately no swami has sent word through vice chancellor that you have to register for phd no he will not give up he will be behind you i said okay now go immediately pack up and go and meet professor uh, venkatraman it was a working day i had syllabus to finish but swami is telling go no syllabus not. okay i packed up and happily i came to parthi i spoke to professor venkatraman and it took some time to talk to them and they fixed a guide for me uh, professor ramurthy a wonderful person and how swami orchestrated everything as a 
he guided me throughout my professional career, a beautiful journey. My research journey was very beautiful. So I, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Professor Ramuti was my guide, at, uh, guy. And uh, every Saturday, Sunday, we'll meet and uh, we'll discuss what is the work I have to do for the next week. I'll complete, submit it, and he will give me fresh work like this. Sometime it was going on. And the work was progressing. And invariably, now and then, Swami will go and ask Professor Ramuti, what is the progress? How much he has done? You know, I, I was, nobody will, will even understand this. Swami taking this much of interest in my professional growth. And you know, uh, later when I started working, the, the, I had to decide on the topic. In between, we got an interview. In that interview, Swami said, guide fix in the, he said. I said, yes, Swami. Do research. Uh, the topic is not decided. Swami said, do research in finance. He gave me the broad area also. You have to do research in the field of finance. Okay, then little our topic narrowed down and uh, Sar was able to guide me and we decided on a topic. Now it is something concerned with stock market, so I had to start collecting data, all publicly available data if I had to collect, you know, it may take nearly two to three months also. So one Saturday, Sunday when I came to meet him in his house, when we were discussing, one person landed in professor's house and introduced himself as Sairam. His name itself is Sairam. And he is one of the uh, top people in Bombay Stock Exchange. And you know, he was introducing and he was telling, and when Sar said, these are the data, don't worry, I'll send you all the data, which I would have taken two, three months to collect. He gave me in just two hours. He sent the entire data within two hours. It is, pu it is publicly available data, not anything which is secret or something. But still, he made things much easy for me, easier for me. So I started working and all. Uh, things were moving. Now I have to write my, actually before this I should have told you about my pre-PhD exam. In 99, October, we were there in, for Dashra celebrations, all of us. And uh, I had registered by that time. And I have to write my pre-PhD exam. It is soon after going back, I have to write. And Swami was in giving mood. Swami started giving Parker pen to all of us. And all the students and including myself, we were in the seventh heaven because we have to write the exam. And Swami is giving a beautiful Parker pen. So as soon as the Parker pen was distributed, everybody opened it and started writing Om Shri Sai Ramata. I also opened and started writing Om Nothing. It was not writing at all. I was trying, trying, doing all gimmicks. Again write, it did nothing. I opened and saw means in the pen, in the refill, there was no ink. Empty pen. He gave me empty pen. I was little disturbed. Swami, I have to write my exam. And you are giving, maybe I will not do well. Anyhow, no, no, I, will, I should do well. So it was some battle which was going on. And as I said, Swami was in giving mood. He went inside, again came out, and started giving us a hand torch, small hand torch, a white one. And as soon as they got, they all started clicking and it started giving light and they were... And Swami was amused. He was standing on that uh, slope with his uh, posture like this and he was swaying like this and enjoy. I also switched on. There was no light. <laughs> I got so scared. I opened and saw there was no battery. Only in my... I asked this side, this side. They all had... Uh, they all had a uh, torch with the battery. I got the torch without battery. My heart sank only. Then again Swami went, came out, started that, that year Swami was giving and giving and giving us gifts and gifts and gifts. And you know third he came and gave us one alarm clock. That was the most amusing thing for Swami. And as soon as God, uh, everybody started setting that time and press the alarm and it started giving kiki kiki. Ki. So whole Kulvand Hall now was uh, making noise. And Swami was so amused looking here and there. I was so scared even to set on this because what is there I didn't know. So I just kept quiet. For a few minutes I kept quiet but then I, I couldn't 
keep back my temptation. I also kept the time and pressed. No sound. No sound. And with so much of trepidation, I opened and saw, again, no battery. Only I got a pen without ink and a battery without a, a torchlight without a battery and a alarm clock without a battery. I was so, so, so unhappy. But I didn't reveal that to anybody. But with so much of depression, I went back home. But now looking back, I understand why Swami gave me all those things. Exam came, I wrote well. And uh, after the exam, my professor said, you have done very well, you have passed in distinction. Then I said, OK, I wrote a letter to Swami. Swami, thank you so much uh, for giving me this uh, buddhi. I have, uh, but I wrote in a different pen only, because anyhow, that pen is not writing. And then I said, Swami, you gave me a pen without ink. You gave me a torch uh, without battery. But what is the meaning of all this? I didn't understand. I gave the letter to Swami. He took the letter. But after some two, three days when I reflected, I understood, be nothing. Empty yourself. I'll fill you with what you need. That was the beautiful lesson. <clears throat> you know, as a father, as a father, he guided me. And this is the lesson a, a father should teach the son or a daughter. Do your duty. Do your duty like what you have to do. But do your best. After that, just empty yourself. Uh, the father should not be behind the children. The father should be at a distance, but should be watching carefully. And this is what I have learned from Swami. You know, he said, you do whatever you do, you do. Then I will know what I have to do for you. You are not. This is the heavenly father, divine father. Be nothing. That was the beautiful lesson Swami had taught me, which I am trying to practice, but sometimes our ego comes in, you know, that uh, we are doing, we are doing. Swami slowly, gently taught me that lesson as a father, uh, be nothing. That mental thing you have to develop. Then coming as a friend, you know, Swami was a friend to me also. You know, as a friend, you know, your friend, we can depend on him. When we need, we can depend on a true friend. And Swami had taught that. Uh, I experienced that also with Swami. And this was at the early point of time when I joined. And uh, suddenly, I got a message from the university where they said, for accountancy, you include solicitor's accounting for this mid-semester portion. And hardly one week was there. I have to teach solicitors accounting. I thought, OK, we can. It is only one credit. That means only one hour I have to teach. OK, I'll go get some information from the library. So I went to the library, started looking into books. Even old books like Batley Boy and all, they didn't have a chapter only called solicitors accounting. R.L. Gupta, every book, all modern books, all old books, everything I searched, but I couldn't find the topic. Then I got little jittery. My God, how will I teach? And those days, you know, it was a watertight compartment between women's campus and men's campus. We cannot communicate, we cannot talk to them, and we cannot find, if we have to, if we have to talk to somebody, some professor, it should first go to the HOD. HOD will tell the principal. Principal will tell that uh, campus principal. That campus principal will tell the uh, uh, concerned professor. Then again, the same route, it will take back, and it will be more than a week. So I didn't know what to do. First of all, I was not permitted to write or talk. Then I was thinking what to do. Then I, so I prayed to Swami then. Oh, Swami, you are my friend. You have to help me. Somehow you just give me some information for solicitor's accounting. Then I'll make my own problems. Just some theoretical part at least. OK? Then some uh, agreement was made between me and Swami. I went, searched library. From this end to that end, all the books, one by one, one by one, I was picking and going through the index thing. Then I just put one book back. Suddenly, from the other side, you know, two arrangements were there. I'd put it like this. From the other side, some books fell because I had put like this. I was so scared because librarian is quite strict. Third, it made a noise, it fell down. So I ran to that side to keep it back in the place. But you know, the books, they had, they had fallen like this. They have opened and they had fallen like this. So I took it like this, solicitor's accounting. Oh my god, I was so happy. You know, 
It is not one, four books, all four books, it was solicitor's accounting. Definitely it is not coincidence. They say a beautiful definition, huh? coincidence is something where we find the hands of God and he chooses to be anonymous. That is, it is a work of God. It is not a coincidence. All four books, I was in and I just took, I said, thank you, Swami, you are my best friend. Immediately, you know. And then I took the book, I just uh, started taking down notes. I understood what the concept is. Within three hours, I was very clear in my head about what I have to teach. I made few problems. And for the mid-semester, I, I gave one five-mark question also there. And after the mid-semester, the question gets distributed to other campus. Then, you know, when we had a common meeting, Professor Radha Swami asked, Rajeshwari, where did you get all those information about solicitor's accounting? And where is the problem? I said, sir, I made the problem myself. Where did you get those instructions? It is there in our library. If you want, I'll take a Xerox and send you. So I gave them the information. It is not that I, Swami, facilitated that. You know, this is, you can depend on God as a friend. And he is there always. When there is a need, he will definitely help us. This is a beautiful lesson I have uh, learned or an ex a relationship which I have experienced with Swami. Another one as a friend, this is not my experience, but my student's experience, which I'll share with you, which you will all really enjoy. You know, this, uh, those days, you know, we didn't have sophisticated recording instruments. When we get interview, we used to take one small tape recorder and so when Swami will give an interview, we don't know. So one student will be given a responsibility. She will always carry one tape recorder with her. Anytime when Swami gives an interview, they'll go and it is her duty to record what is happening inside the interview room. So like that, one day, you know, suddenly Swami called us. It was a holiday, winter holiday. Only few girls and few teachers were there. A small group got an interview. So we all went inside. And when Swami sat inside, he will look at all of us like, Ha, ah, Jayamma, Emi Samacharam. That is, will be his first opening remark. Then Jayamma Madam will close. Emi Ledu Swami. She will say, such a wonderful lady she is. Very, very soft. She will say, nothing Swami. You only have to tell. We will listen. Then Swami will give a smile. And his, Swami will start the interview. When he starts that, the... A recording should start. So this girl was all years to see when Swami is going to start. When Swami started, by mistake, she pressed the play button instead of recording button. Only what happened, you know, screech, like that one noise. Immediately everybody did like this and Swami looked at her. When Swami is angry or upset now, his eyes will become so big. Like that he looked at her with big, big eyes because everything was very... Uh, quiet and silent and Swami was about to start the interview and that silence was disturbed. So people around were also disturbed and Swami was also annoyed. He looked at her like this and this girl was so, she said, ma'am, that day I was so unhappy with Swami. I said, if others look at me with, uh, uh, say, with, with that eyes, it's okay. But you should understand, it was just a mistake. I didn't do it intentionally. You, are, you know everything. Why did you look at me like that? She was so upset and angry with Swami. So she bent her head and she didn't look up at Swami throughout the interview. And you know, the interview got over. Everybody's eyes were glued to Swami because the sign is when Swami gets up, everybody has to get up. And after everybody goes, Swami will switch off the light and then go out. So one by one, everybody has to go. So you know, they were all glued. But this girl was not even willing to look up at Swami, but waiting for the sign to get up. So half she look, looked up and half down. And when Swami got up, he just did his robe like this. And from the robe, one card, small two centimeter by two centimeter card, just fell on her lap. And only she knew, nobody else noticed also. It's a two centimeter by two centimeter folded. That means one square centimeter, one square centimeter on one side. On one side of the card, there was a picture of a broken heart. Oh, I broke your heart. No? On the other side, I'm sorry. Huh? Broken heart. Oh, sorry. He apologized. He apologized. I'm sorry I broke your heart. That's all. Then she forgot the friendship bond because she said, I will never talk to you. I will never look at you. Like that, this girl was 
having a mental communication with Swami because Swami was upset with her. I never thought that he will do this to me. And when Swami did that, when she got up, she smiled at Swami, Swami smiled at her, it was made up. The friendship was made. You know, that bond of friendship started. You know, this is something, all happened in one second. Like this, so many things we can say about how Swami slowly makes us his own. You know, as a friend, as a very normal friend, he behaves. Then, as a teacher, a grinding teacher, as a teacher, you know, now we are, we are graduating. We, we should know that a good teacher, you know, will never thrust her uh, or his experiences or into the head of the uh, student. It is, he will not thrust the information, but uh, he will allow the student, he or she, will allow the student to explore, experience and expand and learn for himself or herself. And this is what Swami did to me. One day, it is, it is again uh, winter holidays. We were all, uh, uh, some few of our teachers, we were sitting. And you know, because only few students and few teachers, we take turns for the first line. Teachers and students will take turns for the first line. So that day, you know, I was sixth in the line. So they were all sitting in the front. And invariably, everybody had a letter in the hand. Everyone had a letter because letter is something which we showed to Swami to get his attention. Nothing else, nothing great in that letter. Sometimes there may be an information, but sometimes we just show letter to get his attention. So Swami looked at the first person and said, hysteria number one, he said. But she giggled. Nobody takes offense because when Swami makes fun of us, we are happy only. Second one, he said, hysteria number two. Third, hysteria number three, I got scared. I hid the letter inside my pallu. I kept the letter like this and did like this. Letter was here, I did like this. As if I don't have a letter, I was uh, closing and closing my eyes, half closing, half opening just to have, and I was looking at Swami. Hysteria three, hysteria four, I was praying, Swami, please go away. Huh? Hysteria five also over. I was, my heart was thumping. Swami stood in front of me and said, good girl, give me your letter. Huh? So now you know, I had, to take, I had to take letter from my hiding and give it to her. Good girl. Why Swami is telling me good girl, what is it? Nothing. So, but you know, for that also everybody giggled, everybody laughed. It was such an uh, enjoyable day for us, for all of us. Swami took the letter and went up. But the lesson comes the ne next day. Next day, because the whole day everybody started, even the unknown people who were in front now, they said, Swami told you good girl, Swami told you good girl. For Swami, everybody, however old we are, we are girls only. Even Jaima Madam also know, Swami will say, good girl to Jaima Madam also. You know, uh, she was our warden, an elderly person, some of you may know her. That time only she was 70 plus and Swami used to tell her, good girl. And you know, that day everybody was around me and said, Madam, Swami said, good girl. So next day, you know, all of them wrote the letter, gave me one big bundle of letter and said, Madam, give it to Swami. So all my students, they collected from all their mothers, everybody and gave me one bundle of letter. I very, very proudly, you know, ha, ah, Swami will take. You know, how Swami puts a prick on that balloon. I took that letter, a bundle of letter, and sat in the first row. Swami came. And very proudly I showed Swami, one big line. Swami looked at me and said, are you a postman? <laughs> you know, that pride, immediately he said, no, this is not the way. You should be the a normal self. You are not going to, are you a postman? He said, and walked past. So I had to distribute all the letters to the children. Man, okay, take back your letters. From then on, I learned my lesson. No, then, <coughs> Uh, next one as a teacher, ah, this was one thing, uh, it's a wonderful lesson which I learned and this is how Swami slowly weans us out of our uh, over dependence on even his physical frame. So uh, uh, a material, uh, physical teacher also should not make the student lean too much on her or him. She should allow the student to learn for themselves but always the supportive hand should be there behind and Swami did that for me. You know, I stopped celebrating my birthdays when I turned 25. And when I came to uh, uh, institute, I was 
past 25. So I didn't celebrate my birthdays. It falls in October during Dashra time. So invariably during birthday time, I will be in uh, Patti only. So it was one such birthday. Uh, I was sitting and Swami came and looked at me and said, I didn't even wear a new sari or something. I forgot that it was my birthday also. Swami looked at me and said, he asked, this day is your birthday. Is it not? He asked. I said, ha ha. Then Swami created Vibhuti, gave it to me and took Akshantalu from somebody and put it on my head. And then he gave me Namaskar and went. I was naturally happy. But next year birthday also, Swami gave me Vibhuti. Birthday kada? He asked and gave me Vibhuti. Now I am all prepared. I came with all good dress and sweet plate and all those things. And Swami blessed everything and gave me Vibhuti. Third year also, wherever I sit, if it is my birthday, Swami will come and give me Vibhuti. Now my friends understood. So on my birthday, they wanted to sit next to me because they knew that Swami will come. And that gave me that ego, that pride, I puffed up. So fourth uh, birthday, uh, Vibhuti gave. Then fifth birthday, I was damn sure Swami is going to give me Vibhuti. So I was, uh, the next day is my Vibhuti day, I thought. The previous day night, I got a dream. The dream Swami came and created one Rudraksh for me. So I thought, oh, Swami is going to give me Rudraksh, oh, not Vibhuti. So with so much of hope and expectations, I went for uh, uh, darshan line. Swami went the opposite side. He didn't even look at me. He didn't come near me. While going back also, he went on the opposite side. I, I was just uh, you know, feeling a little depressed, but I was trying to. By this time, I became more matured and trying to understand why Swami is doing this. Then I was trying to analyze what it is. My, it was my dorm duty also. Those days, you know, when children come, the teachers have to be uh, in the dormitory and take care of them till on an allotted time. So after darshan, without any recognition from Swami, I went to the dormitory, did my dorm duty. By 11.30, I came back. When he was coming back, I thought I'll go to Ganesh, do production and get Ganesh darshan and Ganesh blessings. And I was coming. When I was coming near the darshan, Ganesh gate, Ganesh uh, uh, temple. There was nobody. Those days, you know, one, uh, the priest was called Butt. We all used to ca call him Butt Uncle. He always, the slab, stone slab is not there. Gate used to be there. He closed the gate and he was coming out. And when he saw me, he said, wait. He went, he opened, he went inside, went behind the Ganesha and took one Rudraksh and gave me. And this is the Rudraksh. I have owned this also. No, this is the Rudraksh he gave me. I was so happy. Okay. Swami didn't give me Rudraksh, but this is, you know, little old, old Rudraksh. And Swami didn't give me Rudraksh, at least but, but uncle gave me, and that too from behind Ganesh. I was happy. So I went to the dweller, gave her Rudraksh, and said, set it in gold. And he set it and gave me on, it was a Friday and gave it to me on Saturday. Sunday morning, I came, I, after Darshan I came, I saw Butt Uncle and I showed him. Uncle, you gave me Rudrakshna, I have set it in gold, I put it. He looked at me like this, Anna. Rudraksh, I gave, when? I said, Friday, Friday morning you gave me Rudrakshna, Uncle. He said, no. Thursday evening I went to Bangalore. Whole Friday I was not in Parthi. Ah, I looked like this. Huh? Then, I came back only on Saturday. I said, okay. Then I just kept quiet. I know this Swami. Because I said I have become more matured. Now, what is Swami trying to Don't expect any material things from me. But at the same time, he didn't drop me also. He quietly gave through somebody. And slowly, Vibhuti became Rudraksh to somebody. And then, blessing the plates, chocolate plates. And slowly, that also stopped. Now I have learned, as a teacher, he taught me very subtle lessons, many a subtle lesson like this. Go beyond material expectations. Search for the eternal. And you find your own path and start walking on the path. The guru can only show the path. 
the teacher can only show the path but we have to walk the path and you please uh, do that and this is the last one once we we try to relate swami in the role of a mother father friend teacher we now understand the meaning of the word when he says divyatma swarupikade when he says that first when i heard how he is telling that we are divyatma swarupis we are all normal people and swami says you are god how i don't it was such a confusion at that time now you know swami has slowly made me understand as a mother he is a mother but much more than mother he is a father but much more than a father he is a teacher he is a friend but much more on all that and subtly he always reveals his omniscience omnipotency and his uh, his all powerful nature we get to know and once this mindset is set for us and once we understand the it makes sense for us that divyatma swarup is it makes yes i am the fragment of that soul the higher supreme self i am the fragment once we understand that once that mindset sets in swami just bombards inside and he makes a customized plan for all of us to take us back to our source now we are also ready we have understood that we are not the body we have understood that we are a fragment of that supreme power and till that understanding dawns on us swami plays this multiple roles and slowly he gives us experiences and once that comes we should only make ourselves available to him and he will do the rest and we accept him as guru at this point and he starts playing he steps into the shoes of a individualized guru and for each one of us he he has a customized way of taking us back to our source and in my relationship with swami this is what i have learned be nothing and when we have that mindset at level 1 he satisfies all our material desires and releases us of all the pain which you have to undergo to satisfy our mundane existence be nothing do your work swami will take care of all our needs for our basic existence at the second level he gives us opportunities he creates situations for us and gives us opportunities so that we become eligible for his grace at the third level we understand the divinity but divinity is separate from us we identify divinity with a form sometimes with swami's form sometimes with lord krishna or rama or jesus or buddha or allah but the fourth level we when we look at people we do not judge them by their looks or power or position we look them as soul the i do not look you at a, as a person you do not look me as a person i look you as a soul you look me as a soul and then we start doing our work without any expectation we really understand what is the meaning of be nothing and this is the time when swami becomes so happy with us and takes us along and we have we have just all of us or now surely we have reached the fourth level though we have not fully in the fourth level three levels are complete for us otherwise we won't be sitting here and listening i won't be standing here and starting uh, talking like this you know we have understood the divinity but we have to internalize it and the only way for internalizing it is we have to make ourselves available we make ourselves available to swami he will do the rest because he will never give up on us we have got such a wonderful swami with us i am so happy that uh, i got an opportunity to share my feelings with you all and i thank the organizers and i thank all the little ones who gave that joy soulful music uh, mother and child together and it was a very uh, wonderful soothing soul soothing experience thank you for a wonderful evening and thank you for being with me in your thoughts throughout my talk thank you sai ram amma is telling that she is very very happy and she is feeling very proud and very blessed today to be honored thank you so much